Recently, Sean Baker has made a video explaining that grain-fed beef is adequate for vitamin A intake. And this is a this is an infographic behind me here that uh, Amber, one of our MeterX coaches, put up on an infographic, and I thought it was was interesting. And it shows that you can get your RDA of vitamin A by eating a pound of meat a day. You can grain-fed meat. If you grass-fed, you, you can do it a little less. If you eat liver, you can eat a little less. So what that means is, and this is a thing in the study, they say we really don't know what the real RDA, you know, we, we don't know. We don't have a good handle on what the RDA for vitamin A is anyway. And this is a little bit older study, but that's the, that's the truth of the matter when it comes to RDAs. The RDAs, we really, they're, they're expert opinion. We really, really don't know. And we see special populations, people eating different diets. Maybe the RDAs go up, maybe they go down. But in this particular study, if we look at the US RDA, you can get the US RDA for vitamin A with just eating meat, with just eating muscle meat, that awful muscle meat that everybody thinks is so bad for you. The muscle meat that I've exclusively eaten for three years and I'm breaking world records on, right? Winning world championships on. You don't have to eat liver to get vitamin A. Now, if you want to eat liver, it's great. If you want to get more vitamin A, that's great. There's no evidence to show that getting excess vitamin A is going to save you or do anything anything super. I mean, it really doesn't exist. There is a concern with pregnant women that can get too much vitamin A, so that is that's, that is an issue. So don't feel that you have to gorge on organ meats to get, uh, or even eat some organ meats to get your, your required nutrients, because you don't. You just don't. Anyway, if you like them and they help you, great, good for you, eat them. I'm not opposed to that, but I, I'm, I'm opposed to people putting out false evidence misleading people telling you you must do this to be healthy when that does not appear to be the case. Not too sure Mr. Baker is being honest here. I think everything is carefully orchestrated to justify grain-fed beef consumption. I doubt he even believes what he is saying himself, but let me explain why. He's referencing the American RDA, the Recommended Dietary Allowance, but the definition of the RDAs is to prevent deficiencies in 97.5% of the population. Absolutely zero to do with optimal health. Isn't Mr. Baker for promoting optimal health? If not, what's his goal? Why does he adhere to this organization that updates their information every 50 years? The RDAs were established in 1968 and were recently adjusted in 2016. Really? You would think Sean Baker, uh, someone who appears to be against mainstream dieting, wouldn't be appealing to authority. But here he is, bowing down to the ghoulish demons that call themselves dietitians. What I don't get is Sean Baker always talks about this N equals one stuff, how important anecdotal experiences, you know, how thousands and thousands of people are seeing success on the carnivore diet, yet he's ignoring the thousands of people that aren't successful on the carnivore diet, the people that do have problems consuming estrogenic feedlot beef, high omega-6 meats, low quality animal products, he also ignores the people that feel much better when they eat liver, when they supplement vitamin D3, when they increase the animal food quality in their diet, when they consume raw dairy, when they have wild caught fish. It's just as bad as the vegans, cherry picking, choosing examples to fit their agenda. And if you're truly objective, you're not going to be in the mainstream media. You're not going to end up on the Joe Rogan podcast. Aside from that, our ancestors weren't drawing ribeye steaks on the walls of caves. They were drawing entire animals. In every single one of these groups of people, we see specific food preferences, fat-seeking behavior being prevalent, as fat is nutritious if from quality animals, and calorically needed for survival. But after this fat preference, the liver was always the second most prized food, not any other organs, not the muscle meat. The liver is the most prized part of the animal besides the fat. Scandinavian fishermen held a magical value in fish liver oils. The favorite food of many hunters was also fish liver. Mackenzie Eskimos loved liver as well. Sheep liver was preferred over caribou, and they were especially fond of certain fish livers. Even across the world in native Africa, the liver of any animal was second to only fatty parts. And liver isn't just an excellent source of vitamin A. It has dozens of times the amount of other vitamins like B12 and folate compared to muscle meat. And when it's from fish, 
it has an exceptional amount of omega fatty acids. How can he not mention, you know, vitamin C, vitamin E, minerals, copper, everything is ample in liver. It is a true superfood. What about the context of the entire animal? If we get 40 pounds of meat from one goat, there's five pounds of fat, two pounds of liver, you know, one pound of kidneys, the heart weighs this much, the brains weigh that much. It only makes sense to eat all of the nutrition provided by the animal. The only reason we can eat ribeyes now is because of modern conventional agriculture. For him to ignore this very simple logic leaves two possibilities. One, he's stupid, or two, he thinks his audience is stupid. And Dr. Sean Baker is a very intelligent person, so I don't think it's the former. But does he really devalue his audience that much? Why doesn't he mention vitamin D3? Why doesn't he mention vitamin K2? Where is the talk about fat-soluble vitamins? Why doesn't he care about these things? And then you have Michaela Peterson consuming Canadian beef, which is miles healthier than American feedlot beef, but she says American beef is okay. Mr. Baker, you should stick to carrying barrels around in your backyard and leave nutrition to the more intelligent people. Thank you guys for joining me. I don't know why I spent half of my week uh, defending my dietary ideas. It seems like the vegans, the carnivores, all these special interest people want you to spend $600 a month on their program, buy hundreds of dollars worth of supplements, but uh, that's how it is, right? Everything's about the Benjamins. Uh, so if you guys do want to support me further, hey, drop a like on the video, leave a comment below, subscribe, hit that bell icon. If you can really uh, share the video, that would be great. Uh, I do have Frankie's Free Range Meat providing you with high quality, nutrient dense animal foods at the most affordable price. Uh, we have frank-stefano.com uh, where you can get a free ebook on the five carnivore mistakes you're making. Frankie's Naturals, minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products. Thank you guys for joining me today. Enjoy the rest of your day.